What's up, YouTube? Today I bring you the Lapnas. Let's take a look at this thing. This is a 3U rack mount server running a laptop motherboard and free NAS operating system with a total of six two terabyte hard drives, all mounted with two-sided tape. We've got a motherboard hot glued in featuring some duct tape. This is by far probably one of the most janky server builds on YouTube. And today we're gonna take you through a few of the steps I took to make this. This was just a for fun project and it's a great example of just because you can do something doesn't mean you necessarily should. All right, what we've got here is a Lenovo T520 that was very badly damaged, but I held onto it for a rainy day because you never know. Um, it has a i7 2640M CPU and eight gigs of RAM. So I figured why not try and use that to build a ultra low power NAS. And well, it did work, but there are definitely some challenges along the way. So what I've done is I've done the video in like three highlight reels, maybe you could say, and um, each section shows a part of the build and then uh, we'll end off with just doing some basic performance testing. So in the first little highlight I'm gonna show you, that was just me testing this uh, theory to see if it would even work. And you'll see I was using an old hardware RAID card just to test performance. I set up a couple drives in a RAID zero and uh, got fairly good results. Now, I thought about using the RAID card as a permanent solution for this build, but I was not able to get it to work reliably. So I ended up going with FreeNAS. Let's have a look. All right, so this is one of the damaged pieces. All the wires are just shredded. I probably could fix that, but eh, it's too much work. So I opted to replace the fan from uh, AliExpress. This one was, I think, $12 shipped. Took a while to get here, but it appears to be the same one, and I think that will be an easier replacement. So let's just uh, take this apart. It's actually quite interesting. The, everything lines up absolutely perfectly. It's spawn on, except the screw holes. How annoying is that? Oh well, since this is already gonna be a hack job, we might as well just uh, tape it on and call it a day. All right, just to keep with the, uh, the hack job theme, we're gonna use some duct tape. Man, this is super janky. All right, goop time. We're gonna put a tiny little guy on here. Oh, too much. God, every single time. Oh, I guess I could just collect this so I can actually see what I'm doing. I've never been good at servicing laptops. This stuff's all too small for my liking. So here's the funky cable. So this is gonna plug into the onboard PCIe and this plugs into power. Okay, here's a little update. So I've got the card plugged in here. Power supply here is feeding power to this card. I've done a little jumper on the green wire so the power supply stays powered up. Um, I was originally using this, which is for the LTE or 3G modem, um, but I was not getting any sort of luck out of that. So I switched it to the, the Wi-Fi LAN port. Um, and by Wi-Fi LAN port, I mean the, um, the PCIe slot where the LAN uh, connects or wireless LAN. And uh, we made a little bit of a breakthrough. Now I haven't really fully gone into it, but check this out. Power that up. We'll see the RAID controller do some stuff there, which is a great sign. And then we go over here and boom, look at that. Oh, shoot, look at that. Oh, okay, here we go. There's our first potential problem. Okay, so we're gonna have to install a custom bias on this laptop in order to make this uh, slot become functional. So we're actually writing uh, the new file to the bias right now. I'm, uh, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous that this is going to completely brick this computer. 
because this is not the steps that we're recommending, we're recommended online. Oh, verifying new bias fail, reflashing. Well, I guess that's a, a sign that it did not work. So despite it saying fail, it appears that it, is actually turn, it has actually flashed the, uh, the bias update. Uh oh, my uh, keyboard, oh, nope, I was hitting function. <laughs> that was scary for a second. So anyways, there's 1.49, which was the version of the, uh, the custom bias. And then I've got my advanced um, menu here now showing up, which is a very, very good start. Oh, look, there it is. Smart Array P410. So I've got this hot swap enclosure here hooked up to the RAID card. And um, I had to weigh down the uh, PCIe connector with the duct tape. And uh, we're gonna throw two 15K hard drives in here and put them in a RAID 1. And then we're gonna do some performance tests to see if this is even a viable, viable solution. All right, the test is still running, but um, these initial results are actually extremely promising considering looking at this setup. I mean, look at this thing. So just when you thought it couldn't get any more janky, now we're gonna look at getting the actual case and everything uh, prepped for installation and then installing the board. So part of that includes some modifications to the case and a docking station, which I had for this laptop. There isn't a lot of detail in the docking station mod, except for the fact that I cut it in half to make it fit in the case. I need to make this a little bit flatter because it sits at an angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prop up the back by gluing in just a uh, blank spacer here. And uh, that'll sit something like that. And then the front, so that I can actually get out the ports, I'm just going to cut this uh, end of extension cord a little bit shorter. And the back of this uh, board will sit on that. Right along here and we'll hot glue that in place. And then we'll hot glue this guy on top of it. Pretty uh, unorthodox solution, but I think it will work. All right, here we go. Is the hot glue like what? I'm probably going to get a lot of flack from this, to be honest. It looks funny to me, but I'm not sure exactly. Oh, it's funny, all right. So we're still at a bit of an angle here, so the board is going to sit at an angle. Um, but uh, based on where this sits, I think this will uh, line up perfectly. So I'm just going to place this guy back in, clip it into the dock. go. We'll line up this so it's right against the edge there. We'll leave a crack there and then that's where that's going to go. So we'll pull the board back out and we're going to glue that to the chassis. All 
Alright, that seems to have taken very nicely. So, I think I want to shove something under this side too. Alright. This is looking pretty solid. So one last thing I'd like to do is shove something in here just to make sure that we don't get any lift off the dock port. Mount CMOS battery. Gotta have that mounted. Alright, let's take a look at this monstrosity. So this is an Adaptec HBA card right there. And that will do our four outside hard drives over here. And then we've got a hacked up um, SAS adapter cable here running this hard drive. That's off the main onboard SATA. And then we've got this hard drive over here, which is running off of the CD drive, again, with a hacked up uh, SAS adapter, which is one of these. This is all I had on hand because I needed a way of extending the SATA port. This is the only one I had. So all the hard drives, they're, uh, they're mounted like okay, but they're not amazing. Um, and the last thing I need to think about is just some sort of cooling. But um, first we're gonna see if this thing s fires up. All right, now that we've got this built, let's uh, take a look at the software end of things. So in this last little bit, I was doing some basic FreeNAS setup. Now, keep in mind this is not a tutorial, so I'll post a link to a great uh, video showing you how to set up FreeNAS. Um, but in this video, I'll show you a bit of the performance we were able to get. Little update, I was having power issue with the uh, dock USB port, so I uh, squeezed, and I mean like squeezed in a USB extension. And, um, oops. Got the USB plugged in here. So, Here's hoping that uh, it detects this now and it works. Okay, so we are logged into the FreeNAS interface on my beautiful laptop powered NAS. And you can see our system specs here, the Core i7-2640M, uh, our eight gigs of RAM, uh, right now, obviously, we're just running on DHCP. I haven't set anything up like that. Um, our uptime's actually, well, it's been up for almost two days, but it's just been sitting there doing nothing, so I haven't had time to do anything with it. But at least we know that it's been pr fairly stable. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and um, take a look at our volumes here. So one of the things I did do right away was I created a ZFS1 storage pool. Let's just go ahead and make a share. So we'll go into Samba here. And uh, I don't even know where the new share button is. Oh, there it is. So let's go mount storage. We're gonna allow guest access. And we're just gonna call this uh, ClapNAS storage array. Because why not? Let's look at our advanced options. Yeah, it looks fine. All right, we're just going to go ahead and test uh, a uh, big file transfer here. And we're going to see how that goes, transferring 170 gigabytes. See how static uh, our uh, transfer is. Because this is a mixture of... Um, audio files, video files, so big and large. It'll be a great uh, way to see what kind of speed we're able to maintain right into the lap mass. Alright, so this has been going for quite some time, 
and uh, I just uh, found this little script online uh, that someone made to report temperatures. I did put the case cover on, so we're actually looking at um, a closed up case uh, in operation, I guess you could say. And uh, overall, I mean, this is a laptop CPU. I'm not super concerned about these temperatures. Um, hard drives are on the warmer side, but there is very, very little to no ventilation on them. So, I mean, this could be could be fixed quite easily, but uh, I'm not going to worry too much about it at this point because uh, this is mostly just a proof of concept build and the concept does work. I would love it if I had like some 10 terabyte drives or something to throw in here and give this like a a more appropriate test considering, I mean, not many people are going to be putting two terabyte drives in a uh, NAS in uh, 2020. Um, but all things considering, this, uh, this setup looks pretty good. Let's run this script again. Overall, not too bad. Uh, there's our final temperatures. And uh, let's just go and set up for the reverse of that. Interesting, um, there's definitely a discrepancy uh, with CPU temperature because our little script is registering the temperature is running a lot hotter than it actually is here. That I cannot explain. Maybe someone else can. Um, I kind of thought these temperatures were a little high just based on the temperature of the air coming out of the fan or out of the heat sink. So I'm not entirely sure what we're looking at here, but um, yeah, there's definitely a difference here. You can see overall our usage on everything is not too bad. I would say our, our biggest bottleneck right now has nothing to do with the CPU. Um, even, well, I mean, RAM, more RAM would help, but I believe it's just our disk I.O. You can see that our maximums not surpassing much higher than 20 megs per second for read or write. All right, and there you have it. A fully functional, ultra power efficient NAS made out of an old laptop. I gotta admit, I don't think I would store any sensitive data on this, but I feel like this could be useful for something. And with its ultra low power consumption, it's not really that big of a deal to leave it on 24 7 either. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you wanna see more. And uh, until next time.